we will now discuss fundamental solutions we are talking about solutions of differential equations so let us take a differential operator so l is a differential operator with let's say constant coefficients so this is mod alpha less than or equal to m a alpha d alpha so this is called a constant coefficient differential operator of order m so the a alphas are all constants r or c if you are working with the complex numbers so uh, they are all constants d alpha are the usual derivatives partial derivatives and you are looking at all multi indices of order less than or equal to m and therefore this is a constant coefficient differential operator so let us let s belong to d dash r n and we look for t in d dash r n such that l of t equal to s so if it's a constant coefficient this is well defined because d alpha t is well defined so that means sigma over mod alpha less than or equal to m a alpha d alpha t equal to s so these are called distribution solutions of this differential equation in particular if you take f to be a locally integrable function and you can take s equals tf then you will have the usual differential equation then one can look for all distribution solutions of this equation and decide if these distributions come from functions or not okay that is a different investigation altogether so while we saw in the beginning of this course there are differential equations which you cannot have classical solutions after a very short time so now you have uh, you can look for solutions in the set of distributions so particular case so s equal to delta okay so let us say l of e equals delta suppose s is of compact support that means s belongs to e prime of r n then let us look at s star e so l of s star e is equal to sigma mod alpha less than or equal to m a alpha d alpha of s star e which is equal to sigma mod alpha less than or equal to m a alpha s star d alpha e which is equal to s star l of e which is equal to s star delta which is equal to s therefore s star e is a solution of this differential equation l of t equal to s so t equal to s star e solution of l of t equal to s okay so fundamental solutions uh, can help you to find solu solutions of differential equations they are the building blocks for finding solutions and also they give us a lot of information we will see that probably later about the solution itself so given any solution you can uh, from the fundamental solution you can predict the behavior of some of the solutions even though you may or may not be able to solve it so we so a fundamental solution for l is a distribution e such that l of e equals delta i have used a and not the because fundamental solution is not unique so if u satisfies or 
in d prime r n satisfies l of t equal to 0 then by linearity l of t plus e is also equal to delta therefore you do not have uniqueness of the fundamental solution. So let us take the first example we have already seen this example so example so if you take t uh, l equals d by dx then h is a fundamental solution h equals heavy side function because we know that dh by dx equal to delta okay also we have d by dx of h plus c equal to delta for all c in r because you know that dc by dx the derivative of a constant is 0. So now we will look at the Laplace operator a very important operator in uh, PDE theory operator so delta equals sigma i equals 1 to n d2 by dx i square and we want to calculate the uh, fundamental solution of the Laplace operator. So this is a good example a good exercise in computing distribution derivatives verifying what is a distribution derivative etc. So theorem the function u of x equals 1 by 2 pi log mod x is a fundamental solution of the Laplace operator in R2. Okay. So we will prove this in several steps. So proof. Step 1. First of all, u is locally integrable. Away from the origin log mod x is a nice continuous function therefore you have no problems. So only you have to look at the uh, integrability over a compact set in a neighborhood of omega. So we want to consider integral u of x dx in some ball center origin and radius a. Now if you convert this into so this is equal to integral b0 a of mod sorry mod of ux sorry mod of lord mod x dx and it is equal to integral so let us take a to be less than 1 so that uh, log mod x is nothing but minus log uh, mod x uh, okay so it is a negative number so you have the modulus will be so this will be minus integral 0 to 2 pi uh, integral 0 to a log r minus log r is mod log x because r is less than 1 so mod x equal to r okay and then you have the r dr d theta which is coming from the polar coordinates okay now r log r goes to 0 as r tends to 0 and therefore this function is a good function it is a nice continuous function and therefore this is finite okay so this integral is finite so this defines uh, this is a locally integrable function and therefore it defines a distribution so step 2 so the function u is harmonic in r minus 0 r 2 minus 0 that means delta u equal to 0 okay so this is just a routine check so you take u of x1 x2 this is equal to minus 1 by 4 pi log of x1 square plus x2 square because 1 by this is root of x1 square x2 square this r mod x and therefore I take so for x small 
uh, I am taking this you have uh, so not so it is not minus let us say it is just equal to this and therefore, you now straightforward computation you just compute delta u d to u by d x square d to y by d u square and the neighbor or of the origin and you will find that it is a harmonic function. And actually you do not have to worry whether they are doing the distribution or uh, classical derivative. Here the classical derivative will do but that happens to also be the distribution derivative because you are talking of a very smooth function in the uh, complement of the origin and therefore you do not have to worry. So step 3 you have to show let phi belong to d of r2. So to show integral over r2 u delta phi. So, this is what delta u acting on phi this is equal to integral u delta phi dx and you want to show that is equal to phi of 0. Okay, so, this is what we need to show. Okay, so, now let us go ahead and do that. So, let support of phi which is compact so, it can be put in some big ball. So, it is contained in B 0 ball center 0 radius r and r is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, let 0 less than epsilon less than r and you take omega epsilon is the annulus So, this is omega epsilon is the annulus. So, this is equal to set of all x such that 0 uh, less than epsilon less than mod x less than r. Okay, so, you have the ball radius r and then you have the ball radius epsilon here and therefore, this is omega epsilon. Okay. Now, integral on omega of u delta phi dx will be integral on omega epsilon plus integral on the ball center origin radius epsilon u delta phi. Okay. But since the Lebesgue integral u is locally integrable therefore, it is integrable on b0 epsilon delta phi is a scene 20 function with compact support. So, u delta phi is an integrable function and therefore, by the absolute continuity of the Lebesgue integral you have that limit epsilon tending to 0 of integral u delta phi dx or of the ball center origin radius epsilon equal to 0 and therefore, you have that integral over r2 not omega sorry of u delta phi dx is limit as epsilon goes to 0 integral on omega epsilon of u delta phi. Okay, so, this is the limit which we need to compute. So, let us compute that integral. So, integral on omega. So, now u delta phi dx. So, I am going to use the everything is a smooth function u omega epsilon is away does not contain the origin. So, u is a smooth function delta phi is a smooth function. Therefore, we are going to use Green's theorem which is the uh, 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 higher dimensional generalization of the integration by parts formula and therefore, this is equal to integral on omega epsilon u of x delta phi x dx and that is equal to integral by the Green's formula this is equal to integral epsilon delta u x phi x dx plus the integral on the boundary. So, let us call this outer boundary as s of r. So, s of r equals mod x equal to r and this one is s of epsilon which is mod x equal to epsilon. Okay, so, you have these two surfaces and therefore, circles. So, you have integral on s of r of u d phi by dx by dr minus phi du by dr. How did I get this? ds 
this is the integral on the boundary. Now, I should write u d phi by d n where n is a normal derivative, but the outer normal derivative is same as the derivative in the radial direction where the ball is concerned and when centered at the origin. And then similarly for the inner ball, you will have integral of s epsilon u d phi by dr minus phi d u by dr ds. But now because the inner normal uh, outward normal to the domain is in towards the origin. So, you have to put a minus d by dr for the normal outer normal derivative. Okay. Now, by step 2, u, delta u is harmonic. So, this is equal to 0. So, this integral disappears. Now, uh, u is a uh, phi is a C infinity function with compact support. So, all its uh, function and all the derivatives uh, vanish outside a compact set which is contained inside r. So, on the ball of radius r all these functions are 0 and therefore, this integral also disappears. So, you have this is equal to now I just have to write this one this is s epsilon sorry not epsilon s epsilon. So, I am going to write the integral on ds, s is the circle remember. So, the integral ds is nothing but epsilon d theta. So, that is the integral for uh, ds, s epsilon is the radius of the circle. So, you have minus 1 by 2 pi epsilon and u is nothing but log epsilon. and integral 0 to 2 pi d phi by dr at epsilon theta d theta. Then this minus goes in as a plus 1 by 2 pi into epsilon. Now, d by dr of phi is phi u is nothing but log epsilon. So, d by dr of log r at r equal to epsilon okay, and then integral 0 to 2 pi that will be a constant. So, it comes out of the integral phi of epsilon theta d theta. Okay. Now, mod d phi by dr is bounded by some constant over uh, independent of independent of epsilon because phi is a C infinity function with compact support and epsilon log epsilon goes to 0. So, this whole integral here goes to 0 as epsilon goes to 0. Okay. So, now we are giving so limit as epsilon goes to 0 integral omega epsilon u delta phi dx equal to 1 by 2 pi. Now, d by dr of log r is 1 by 1 by r at r equal to epsilon you get epsilon. So, that epsilon gets cancelled. So, you just get integral 0 to 2 pi phi of epsilon theta. Okay, so, now okay, it is fine, fine. So, limit epsilon going to 0 d theta. So, this I will write as limit epsilon tending to 0 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi this is one of our old tricks phi of epsilon theta minus phi of 0 d theta plus phi of 0. Now, phi of 0 is a constant. So, integral 0 to 2 pi d theta is just 2 pi, it cancels with 2 pi. So, you just get plus phi of 0. So, we just have to find this limit here. Now, what do you know about this limit? Now, phi epsilon theta minus phi of 0 goes to 0. In fact, it goes to 0 uniformly. Okay. Uh, 
but anyway it doesn't matter it goes to 0 and mod of phi epsilon theta minus phi of 0 is less than equal to 2 times norm phi infinity and that is integrable because it is a constant and you have a finite interval. So, by the dominated convergence theorem you have that limit epsilon tending to 0 integral over omega epsilon u delta phi dx is equal to limit of the first integral is 0 by the dominated convergence theorem and therefore you just get phi 0 ok and this proves the theorem because so that is integral over r2 of u delta phi dx equal to phi of 0 equals delta of phi ok and this implies that delta u equal to delta ok so that is a fundamental solution to the equation. So now what about if n is greater or equal to 3. So if n is greater or equal to 3 then you have let alpha n equal surface measure of unit ball in R n and let omega n be the volume of the unit ball in R n that means n dimensional Lebesgue measure of the unit ball. Then we can show so fact is a very nice application of the Gauss divergence theorem alpha n equals n times omega n. So, let us see when n equals 2 you have alpha 2 which is the perimeter of the circle which is 2 pi and omega 2 is the area of the unit circle which is pi. So, you see it is equal to pi. When n equals 3 alpha 3 equals 4 pi. 4 pi r square is the surface area of the sphere of radius r and omega 3 is 4 by 3 pi r cubed. So, for the unit cube uh, sphere it is 4 by 3 pi. So, you see uh, this is 3 times 4 by 3 pi and this is not an accident in fact it is true for all this thing. And what about omega n? Omega n can be given by the following formula it is pi to the n by 2 divided by gamma of n by 2 plus 1 where gamma is the gamma function. Okay, so, we omit the details of this, this you can find uh, it is a very interesting calculation we, maybe we will see it later on ok 40. So, now we state the theorem we will very rapidly prove it because we have more or less done most of the work in the previous theorem. So, let n be greater than or equal to 3 alpha n equals surface measure of unit ball on R n that means the area uh, surface measure of the unit sphere ok units. So, let me call it unit sphere. So, here also let me write ok then u x equal to minus 1 by n minus 2 alpha n mod x to the n minus 2 is a fundamental solution of delta in R n. Okay, so, we will uh, prove so, step 1 u is locally integrable. Why is this so? So, you have if you, you again you only need to check in the neighborhood of the origin. So, b 0 a of mod x to the 2 minus n dx is nothing but if you take the polar coordinates this is a radial function. So, this is equal to 0 t a r to the 2 minus n then r power n minus 1 alpha n dr. So, that will be the uh, this thing and therefore, this is r power 2 minus n. So, this is just r. So, this is equal to alpha n a square by 2 
which is finite ok. So, this is just polar coordinates in n dimensions ok. So, and we are using the fact there is no d th in uh, the previous one we had r d theta we had a 2 pi the 2 pi came because that is the alpha 2 is 2 pi because the integral again was a radial function we integrated out and you got the 2 pi. Now, uh, when the t dr d theta we wrote. Now, we are not reading, rewriting the other part, we have integrated it out and produced it comes out as the uh, surface measure of the unit ball, ok. Then to u is harmonic on r n minus 0. So, all you have to do is if v is radial v, v of x equals v of mod x equals v of r. So, then we have delta v is equal to d 2 v by d r square plus n minus 1 by r d v by d r. So, you just substitute and you calculate. So, this will give you the delta of this function is 0 in r n minus origin ok. So, then 3 step 3 is the calculation which we are going to go through rapidly. So, phi is in d of r n support of phi in b 0 r ball of center origin radius r omega epsilon as usual set of all uh, 0 less than epsilon less than mod x less than r ok. So, you have the same uh, the thing and therefore, integral over r n u delta phi dx is again once more limit of epsilon going to 0 integral over omega epsilon of u delta phi dx ok. And then integral on omega epsilon u delta phi again I am going to use the uh, <coughs> ok the uh, green side entity and once more if I I will get del, delta u times phi that part will go away to 0 because of the harmonic nature of u and therefore, you will have that this is equal to 1 by alpha n times n minus 2 integral on s epsilon integral on sr will again be 0. So, this will only give you integral on s epsilon epsilon to the 2 minus n times d phi by dr minus phi d by dr of r to the 2 minus n at r equals epsilon times d sigma x. Again this part will go to 0. Why? Because you have uh, mod integral s epsilon of epsilon to the 2 minus n d phi by dr d sigma x is less than or equal to. So, m times which is comes from this derivative epsilon to the 2 minus n then you have alpha n r uh, epsilon to the n minus 1 and that is the, uh, the thing which is equal to m alpha n times you have epsilon and that goes to 0 as epsilon goes to 0. Therefore, you have that limit epsilon tending to 0 integral on omega epsilon u delta phi dx which is equal to integral over r n u delta phi dx and that will be equal to limit of epsilon going to 0 n minus 2 by alpha n n minus 2 1 by epsilon to the n minus 1 into integral s epsilon phi of epsilon y d sigma y ok. And again this d sigma y will be nothing but epsilon power n minus 1 times uh, alpha n uh, uh, integral over the unit ball. So, when you convert this to an integral over the unit ball you will get uh, this epsilon power n minus 1 will go and you can easily show that this goes to 
phi of 0, the usual way, add and subtract phi of 0 and you will get it. Okay, so this completes the proof. So, you will uh, try to do this calculation uh, yourself. So, this thing you add and subtract 0 and then you will show that it, uh, the whole thing can go to 0. Okay. Fine. So, this is uh, about the fundamental solution of the Laplacian. So, now if you have, suppose you have, you want to solve delta u equal to f in Rn and let us say f has compact support. Then we already saw a fundamental solution star f is a solution. So, in n equals 2, you have f of x u of x equals 1 by 2 pi integral over r2 log mod x minus y, I am taking the convolution times f of y dy. So, if you add n equals 3, then u of x will be equal to minus 1 by 4 pi integral over r3 f y by mod x minus y. You might have seen such formulae earlier uh, when studying partial differential equations uh, in particular the Laplace operator. So, this comes from the thing. So, finally, we uh, this it is not necessary that f should have compact support. Uh, it is enough f has sufficiently good decay properties so that this integral makes sense. Then also one can show that this is the solution. Now, uh, as an application of the Hahn-Banach theorem, Mulgrange and Aaron Price have shown that every constant coefficient differential operator has a fundamental solution. So, this is Mulgrange Aaron Price theorem. For instance, you can find a proof in Rudin functional analysis. Okay. So, with that, we will stop this discussion.